The Vulture is one of Spider-Man's most long-standing villains. First appearing in the second issue of The Amazing Spider-Man in 1963, the Vulture committed crimes, striking from a secret hideout in an abandoned silo on Staten Island with the use of a winged suit that somehow harnessed magnetic energy to silently fly. He even defeated Spider-Man in their first encounter, but in traditional superhero fashion, Spidey discerned the secret behind the Vulture's flight and created a device, the Anti-Magnetic Inverter, to nullify it and left him for the police. The Vulture next appeared in Amazing Spider-Man number 7. Having recreated his flying harness using parts he cobbled together in prison, he escaped to build a new suit designed to be unaffected by Spider-Man's Anti-Magnetic Inverter. The Vulture next appeared as a member of the Sinister Six, a group of villains brought together by Dr. Octopus in Amazing Spider-Man Annual No. 1. Later, in Amazing Spider-Man No. 48 and 49, the Vulture seemingly died in prison after his cellmate, Blackie Drago, arranged an accident to get the Vulture to reveal where he'd hidden his wings and usurp his position. However, in issue number 63, the original Vulture returned, revealing that he had survived his injuries and escaped to recreate his wings yet again. The Vulture broke Drago out of prison, returning the wings he'd previously used. However, rather than team up, the Vulture challenged Drago to combat to prove his superiority. While Drago was younger and stronger, the older man's experience and improved technology allowed him to prevail and solidify his position as the true Vulture, even escaping after another encounter with Spider-Man. He wasn't seen again until Spectacular Spider-Man number 4 and number 5, nearly 10 years later real-time in 1977, upgrading his suit to increase his speed and strength. After gaining the ire of mob boss Mr. Morgan, the Vulture found himself in a three-way battle between himself, Spider-Man, and an assassin named the Hitman. The fight ended when the Hitman, while aiming for Spidey, destroyed the power pack in the Vulture's suit and escaped. Despite suffering a bad fall, the Vulture was found and rescued by his nephew and last living relative, Malachi Tombs, as shown in Spectacular Spider-Man number 44 and 45. Together, Tombs and the Vulture began taking over New York's mobs. After knocking out Spider-Man and sending his chained body into a furnace, the Vulture revealed that he had manipulated fellow mobster Black Alfred into eliminating their rivals, and he knew that Alfred had planned to betray him as well. Meanwhile, Spider-Man escaped his flaming prison inadvertently setting fire to the building. Malachi and Vulture fled the growing inferno, only to be followed by Black Alfred, who shot Malachi, killing the Vulture's only remaining family. The Vulture pummeled Black Alfred mercilessly, but he was intercepted by Spider-Man before he could kill him. The two superpowered opponents fought a pitched battle across the skies of New York, spilling into Grand Central Station, the fight finally ended when the Vulture, blinded by rage and groggy from Spider-Man's superhuman assault, attempted to escape, but instead slammed into an ultra-hard glass barrier. Delirious and defeated, the Vulture was taken into custody yet again. The Vulture was next seen in Amazing Spider-Man number 224, stripped of his suit and recovering from his injuries in Bellevue Hospital. There, he met Nathan Lubensky, a wheelchair-bound man who was also the boyfriend of Peter Parker's Aunt May. Here we finally learn the Vulture's real name, Adrian Toombs. Inspired by Nathan's attitude towards his own disability, Toombs used components from the hospital's experimental machines to build a makeshift flying harness, as he once did in prison, and became the Vulture yet again. Toombs quickly returned to a solo life of crime, but he also attempted to maintain a friendship with Nathan Lubensky by keeping his identity hidden. However, he was discovered by Peter Parker, who had come with Aunt May to retrieve Nathan from their poker game. Knowing that a Daily Bugle photographer was likely to recognize him, Toombs led Peter away from the group and changed into his vulture gear, intending to kill Peter. However, Peter was able to sneakily change into Spider-Man without revealing his secret identity. The ensuing battle spilled over into the room they were previously in, 
The vulture took a random hostage, but upon realizing he'd inadvertently grabbed Nathan, he released him, shoving him aside, and quickly made his escape. Toombs fled to the west coast, but in Amazing Spider-Man number 240 and 241, he learned that a company named Bestman Electronics would be present at a high-tech expo and returned to New York. Breaking into the exhibition hall, the Vulture captured Gregory Bestman and escaped, but not before Spider-Man tagged him with one of his miniature spider tracers. The Vulture brought Bestman back to his old hideout on Staten Island. Here, 20 years after his first appearance, we finally learn the origin of the Vulture. It's revealed that Bestman and Toombs were once business partners in a successful electronics company. This is where Toombs initially got the funds and the components to create the original electromagnetic harness that allowed the wearer to defy gravity. When Toombs went to tell Bestman of his amazing breakthrough, he found that Bestman had been lying to him, understating the company's profits and keeping large amounts of money from him. In his anger, Toombs easily lifted Bestman and realized that the electromagnetic harness had increased his strength several times over. With no evidence to incriminate Bestman, Toombs left using the money he did have to secretly retire to an old firm on Staten Island. Here, he continued to work on his flying harness. Here, he became the Vulture. With his new suit and new powers, the Vulture's first target was Bestman and Toombs Electronics. He destroyed the building and everything inside, searching for evidence against his former partner. Instead, he found the money that Bestman had embezzled and took it for himself, beginning his life of crime. Now, years later, Toombs had finally returned for Bestman himself. Of course, using the tracker to find him, Spider-Man rescued Bestman and defeated the Vulture, ripping out his power pack and turning him over to the police once again. Meanwhile, the police, having overheard the Vulture's story, decided to launch an investigation into Bestman's business practices. So those were the earliest appearances of the Vulture, spanning 1963 to 1983. If you want to hear more about the Vulture, or other Marvel characters or storylines, sound off in the comments below. And if you liked this video, click that like button, share it on your favorite social media platforms, and be sure to subscribe for more. Until next time, true believers, Excelsior!